Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. It's your brother Mufasa Mujadid al Ma'a. And um, we're just going to be looking at, as you see the title, <coughs> what is truly the Surat al Mustaqim. So, um, <coughs> at the end of the video, I'll be uh, putting a link there so you can look at the differences of viewpoints on certain things that I'll be talking about. <laughs> so what I'm going to do going to uh, first go on what the Quran says, the straight path is, and uh, <clears throat> we're also going to go over uh, some, some hadiths that uh, is common that you hear, and uh, what, you, what you're going to um, eventually understand is that these hadiths are actually, they're there are variations of hadiths out there that actually are talking about the same exact thing. Um, but you'll find nowadays the way that they're narrated, they build up to something different with each hadith that, that is quoted. So here's, here's basically what I'm going to do. We're going we're gonna to go in. We're going we're gonna, to um, look at... Uh, the Islamic, you know, or the, the history of Islam and its development, um, particularly in the school school of Medina, um, <clears throat> as well as the school of Hadith, Ahlul Hadith and Ahlul uh, Medina or Amal Medina. And then uh, we're going to see step by step, inshallah, um, basically how people have come to add things onto the straight path that um, for example rule, and we'll get into this more rules of hadith uh, as far as the science of hadith um, you know what, what methods they have to determine a hadith is sahi or weak that whole science that came about um, slowly formed and um, originally, you will find that the city of the Prophet in Medina, that was the live, uh, what you call the live sunnah, right? The live practice of the Prophet, to which, you know, after the Prophet died, they carried on the practices. So, um, other people, generally, outside of Medina, they would go in search of and narrating of hadith. But if a hadith was narrated, at that time, when people would go into Medina, they would look at the practice of the people of Medina. And that would tell you if your hadith was authentic or your hadith was not authentic. And in most cases, because Medina, the prophet city, who, where he established his sunnah, he established the straight path. Okay, um, that was the the example to look towards. You see, so um, eventually, you know, groups like you know Alu Alu Ray, you know, using hadith, you know, with intellect and empirical knowledge and stuff like that. Um, Alu Hadith. Um, which is coming up with the isnad, a chain of authority, uh, back to the prophet of people that are narrating hadiths. And then you had, um, and I put a third category because my research has led me to see that there's a third category, not just two, Amal Medina. And in Amal Medina was the practice of the sunnah, live sunnah of the prophet. Um, they had went through all the stages that any of the hadiths would speak on. Okay, and what the Prophet had left Medina as and died upon is what the final sunnah, the way the sunnah is to be practiced. 
right? So um, when you go to Medina, you find out what the Sunnah, you know, what what the final Sunnah was to be practiced, right? And any Hadith was to be compared to that. And so um, you find develop inside Medina where uh, people would, uh, for example, Imam Malik in his time, um, then the time of the Umayyads, um, he would, you know, like if he would hear Hadith, to him it was it was like, you know, the Islam to him was not built on Hadith. The Islam to him was built upon the practice of Medina, the live Sunnah of the Prophet. You see, and so when people from outside Medina, and there was a few people narrating Hadiths in, in Medina too, but the majority of Alo Hadith was outside of Medina, searching for the Hadith. Whereas in Medina, you didn't have to search for a Hadith because that is the prophet city. That's where he migrated to. That's where the Hijrah happened. And his practice was put, his, his, his sunnah was put into practice. Okay. And when he died, it was there. So it was a living tradition. Okay. When people have Hadith, everybody else was searching for Hadith outside, especially in Iraq where the Ahlul Rai grew. Right. So, um, you know, the Alul Hadith movement developed basically the more of an Isnad type approach. You know, tracing the narrators back. And then if the narration traces all the way back, you know, it's authentic in their view. And then you have Alul Rai. They were like, they, they focus more on the text, the comments that were made in the text. And secondary would be the Isnad, right? But Alul Rai, uh, excuse me, Alul Medina or Amal of Medina, Amal meaning action, they had the living Sunnah. Okay, so so what my research has got me to is there was three main groups, okay, and methods. Alright, so um so what we're gonna do, we're gonna actually show really what the Surat Mustaqim is, and you will start to find out that this later on inventions of these and, and we're gonna in another video I'll probably have to do it, what an al ulama is, and I'll just say it briefly. Al ulama, al ulama at that time. Right, at the at the beginning was those who learned in astronomy. Okay, through reflection they came to the realization that Allah is one. That that is what Al Ulama was. Okay, now Fuqaha, Fuqaha at the time did not mean a jurist. Fuqaha at the time meant a person who thoroughly understood his deen. Okay, fiqh means to understand. It was the whole of the deen. Okay. So, but but you'll find as time went on, these terminologies developed, okay, just like uh, rules for hadith developed, right, rules of hadith was invented, you see, um, and this is going to be a comfortable one I'm talking about, but it's something that has to be talked about and pointed out in a certain way. So we're going to go over certain hadiths, like I said, that you, that we've read and then we've been given, um, Later on, interpretations of them, um, and did not stick to really uh, the original intent. Okay, and for the main part, many um, scholars nowadays think that's so. You know, they view that as okay. You know, um, but what happens is we, those of us, we, we get lost in not knowing what the original understanding was, right? So we yell, we follow these ways, or we follow the way of the original. You know, or the way of the Sahaba, or the way of this and that. Uh, and then we don't have the original understanding of how they understood it, right? Um, so here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna we're gonna go over one hadith. Um, you know the famous ones. Um, after me, there will be differences. Um, follow my sunnah and the sunnah of my Khulafa Rashidun, right? Eventually, eventually, this came to be applied to Abu Bakr, Umar, you know, Uthman Ali. Uh, you're gonna find out some people differ. They said no, it's not. It's just not Abu Bakr and Umar. Um, some people restricted it and said it's Abu Bakr and Umar only. Um, and some people restricted it and says general. It includes other Sahabi. Then as time went on later on, that interpretation that it was Abu Bakr and before Riley got a caliphs was sealed. Okay, but people don't think that at the time the Prophet said it, he was talking to his Sahaba. He says to them, many differences will increase among you. Right? He says, follow my sunnah 
and the Sunnah of Khulafa Rashidun, right? And so um, another hadith, and we'll, I'm gonna go back into that and give you the understanding of that. You can go look it up and verify for yourself. You accept it, you don't. You don't. If you do, you do. Alhamdulillah. Um, another hadith that we're familiar with is uh, whosoever innovates into this affairs, it will be rejected of him. Okay? That hadith has also been given a, a, a sort of uh, type of new understanding. It's not new, new, but it's you know, the, the type we've been given. Um, it's used to justify sectarianism nowadays. Um, the original intent was not that. And you're going to find out that the, the, the word in there is Amruna. Um, excuse me. Amruna. Our commands. Whoever innovates brings something new. And some people understand it to mean without a precedence. Whoever brings something new without a precedence. Meaning the prophet didn't do it. Um, the key word though is uh, Amruna. In our commands. It will be rough. It will be rejected. Okay. So the commands though. What is the commands? The commands, I'll tell you right now, is Surat al Mustaqim. Okay, so we're going to go over the commands and then you're going to see that the very people that say, that, that use this often, particularly those who have, uh, who was based up off the Ahludi Hadith movement, who invented the rules of Hadith, how to decipher if a Hadith is authentic or Sahih or, you know, Mutlaq or, you know, you know, the different categories, you'll find out that it an actual, because the, when you have this science, it determines what your dean is. See, a person who becomes learned in this science that was invented can be determined what is part of your dean and what is not part of your dean. So then, that science in itself is a so-called is a bidah. But they'll never say it like that. They won't. They won't. If you say something like that, they'll be like, "Don't listen to that guy. He's jahu. He's jahil. He's ignorant." Right? Uh, and you would be ignorant. You would be ignorant of the science that they put together. You see, and they say it was a necessity. And the point of me saying this is that if at that time, right, if you would go to Medina, you would need these sciences. Because Medina was the living practice of the Sunnah. There wasn't people, you know, there was, you didn't need no sciences of Hadith to determine weak, Sahi and rejected because you just go to the Amal of Medina, the people of Medina, and you would see what the living Sunnah was. You see? So, um... It's not to say that some of them didn't have their own hadiths, but we're going to get into famous quotations in Medina that they used to give to people who would come um, and quote the category of hadith called Ahad. Because at this time, Ahad just meant actually what the word is one. But as time went on, you're going to find that Ahad, you know, they say, well, Ahad could be one, it could be three people, it could be... Uh, then finally, the, uh, it developed into, you know, it could, it could be a no number. Unless it just reaches the rank of mutawatir, if it doesn't reach, excuse me, if it doesn't reach the rank of mutawatir, which is mass narrated throughout the three generations, then it's called ahad. So they took away the exact meaning of ahad and just said, oh, ahad means, you know, it could be any number, right? As long as it doesn't reach mutawatir, and then you know, if you go to different madhabs or you go to different methods. Um, people will debate over what Ahad is. So so whenever you find these type of differences, there's where you'll know that that's not originally the deen because the deen has no differences. And when I read out to you the Surat al-Mustaqim, you will then find out that, yeah, this is so simple, right? There's no difference in it. It's one deen. The deen Allah gave Noah. The deen Allah gave all the prophets all the way down to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There is no difference in it. La firaq. No differences, no division. Okay? But what has happened is we've come to accept differences. Okay? And we say it's a divine mercy. And even when you go back to that hadith, originally that just meant that the divine mercy was referring to uh, when you do shura, consultation, in military for a nation, and you form different divisions, and that helps protect the ummah, then that is a divine mercy from Allah because He gave you the aql, He gave you the intellect to do different uh, uh, dividing strategies, right, to thwart an attack of the enemy. Okay, we'll get to that, but we'll get to that, all right, uh, eventually. Um, so let me go ahead and read off these things. I'm going to read off several things about what the Surat al-Mustaqim is, and you'll come to find out that um, 
it's the Surat al Mustaqim um, is very simple. Okay? It's very simple and this deen is easy. Okay, but people, because they want to rule over us, like the prophet said, right, in the hadith, right? He says that the Ummah, and who is he talking to at the time? He's talking to the Sahaba. He said, you will follow them inch by inch, span by span, until you all end up into the lizard hole. And I'm not saying all the Sahaba are stray or uh, any of that. What I'm saying to you is that the Prophet Sallallahu prophesied, and he said that people will end up like Christians and Jews. And that's how it is now. We have a priesthood now. We have the al-ulama who have become a priesthood. You see? And you can't know your Islam unless you know through them. You see, and, and it may not be exactly how the Christians do it or the Jews do it, and of course it wouldn't be. But the fact that people, you know, this sheikh or this scholar say this and that, and he passes a fatwa or a hukum, a judgment. And some people think, some people really believe the hukum is you must, you are bound to follow that. And they will call you a, a, a muti, they will call you, you know, a kafir, they will call you a munafik, they will call you a fasik. If you don't follow certain things, you know what I'm saying? And so this this is this has gotten, you know, way out of hand. You know. So let me go ahead and get to this. I'm gonna get to first Asrat Musakim. You'll you'll come to realize it pretty easy. Um and then we'll get to the other those other hadiths I, I spoke of. Let me see if I miss something real quick, because I wrote down some notes. Um Rashidun, the uh hadith about Bidda. Um, okay, and then, alright, so, listen to this, so remember, when, when, when Islam was growing, according to the Sira of the Prophet, remember the pledge of Aqaba, how the Muslims swore allegiance to the Prophet, that is a Shahada, Shahid is one who bears witness in their heart, and then they profess on their tongue, so look at this, Listen to this. Okay. The major commandments. Surah uh, 6, Ayat 151. Say, come. Let me tell you what your Lord has really made haram. And haram in this sense means sanctified. Because haram does not always mean forbidden. Okay, that's another uh, misnomer. Haram does not always mean forbidden. Haram means forbidden uh, when the context of the, with the context of that word Allah tells you what you're not allowed to do but haram is also something that can be you know you're supposed to do but haram really just means sacred something that's sanctified and then Allah tells you whether it's something that you're allowed to do or it's something that you must do or it's something that you're not allowed to do and we're going to read this in here in Surah 6 Ayah 151 it says say come Tell me what your Lord has really made haram for you. Listen to this. And, but I translate it as, come, let me tell you what your Lord has really made, really sanctified for you to do and not to do. It says, one, you shall not set up deities along with the law. That's rule number one on the Surah Al-Mustaqim. No deities along with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Two, you shall honor your parents. Now remember, this is under the word haram. But it's telling you, you are to do this. You are to honor your parents. See? So, it's not haram forbidden to honor your parents, right? So haram in this sense, it, 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 haram really means sanctified. But then Allah tells you what way, of sanct, what, what way of sanctity it is. Whether you don't do a thing or whether you do a thing. All right. So it says, you shall not set up idols or partners beside Allah. You shall honor your parents. Three, you shall not kill your children. For fear of poverty, we provide for you and them. You shall not commit gross and shameful deeds. That's number four. Obvious or hidden. Fahisha. You shall not do fahisha. Openly or hidden. Like adultery, you know, um, openly, you know, uh, Hidden. I read one taps here that said something to the fact uh, sexual relations with one's, you know, uh, parents or something like that, right? Um, 
you should not commit gross shameful deeds or obvious uh, or hidden. You are not to kill. Allah has made life sacred, except in the course of judgment. These are his commandments, his amr, to you, that you may understand. This and this. You should not touch the orphan's money, except in the most righteous manner, until they reach maturity. Seven, you shall give full weight and full measure when you trade. Equitably, we do not burden any soul beyond his means. Now, focus on that part real quick. Pause. You know, in um, Islamic history, a category of Quran tafsir developed. Where they would take a part of an ayah. And they would, it, it was specific, but they would make it general. Um... And this ayah right here is actually one of the ones they did it with. Um, we do not bear burden upon any soul than what it, <laughs> it can bear. Right? But the thing about it is, if you look at the full context, the full context is referring to something else. It's part of the Surah team, Okay? So, uh, let's continue. But we'll, we'll get to that sometime later on in the series. I mean, I got a whole bunch of stuff that we're going to be going through, inshallah. Um, some of the things I'll be giving... Um, uh, I would give them references. Um, and then um, later on, I'll put the link to some of the things I said. Um, inshallah. So it says, uh, seven, you shall give full weight and full measure when you trade. Equitably, we do not burden any soul beyond its means. Eight, you shall be absolutely just when you bear witness, even against your relatives. Why? Because we know what Asabia was, right? person was one with their relatives. See, all these rules right here, all these rules on the Salat al-Mustaqim were eels that were inside uh, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's society, right? And eels in, in, in a lot of societies, right? You know, give or take, right? So um, that, that rule right there was against the asabiyah that was going on. You know, people riding with their, their relatives, whether they did right or wrong. And this connects to another hadith that says, Help your brother whether he's an oppressor or the oppressed. They say, Ya Rasulullah, how do we help my brothers if he's oppressed? And he says, by stopping him from oppressing. You see? So this is one of those ayats that, that connects to that hadith. Um, it says, we didn't, okay, so You shall absolutely be just when you bear witness, even against your relatives. Nine, you shall fulfill your covenant with the law. Then it says, These are his commandments to you that you may take heed. Now, note this. Surah 6, Ayah 153, then goes and it says what? This is Masaratul Mustaqim. This is Masaratul Mustaqim. Now there's other things on it, like don't gamble, don't commit adultery. You understand, Zina. Masaratul Mustaqim. But right here we're dealing with this part. This is Masaratul Mustaqim. You shall follow it. Now this is a key. This right here, right here is the key part, because this deals with all the other hadiths that you've been hearing. Um, whomsoever adds uh, uh, something in, this, in, in our affairs or in the Amr, the Amr, right? Um, it shall be rejected of him. Um, the other hadith, uh, and that starts off with, there you will see differences, meaning people will start not following this right here. Okay, that's what this is meaning. People will start not following this, this list right here. Okay? And they will differ. They will go astray. And then some people will take up their old ways and factions or whatever. Right? Um, the Surah Al-Musaqim is also the Sunnah, conduct of the Prophet, that he established as a living Sunnah in Medina. Okay? Uh, so, it says, This is my straight path, Surah Al-Musaqim. You shall follow it. And right here. And do not follow any other paths, lest they divert you from his path. These are his commandments to you that you may be saved. Okay. So, uh, then I put a comment on I said, this is the path of the prophet, his family and companions. We're told to stay on this path of laws and to not divide away from them and to be united on them. And that to go away from them is to become factions, sects. Uh, whoever stays to this sunnah, way or custom, of the Prophet is the right group who remain true, who gets Jannah. 
on the prophecy of the right group is those who follow the Sunnah. He was referring to these principles, these laws, these Amr, okay, and not to divide away from them. And that those who are are those who became a different division, meaning cutting away from it. So as we see, this has nothing to do with current day what Muslims think as far as Sunni, Shia, Ibadi, and the different groups, or my difference of opinion, you know, over whatever. As long as there's no shirt being committed, number one, right? Um, it has to do with deviating from these laws, these principles, these commands, to which the first generation has swore to do, or not to do, which is the path. Now, if you go look at, I just read the whole thing off to you, but if you go look um, at the Aqba, you see, the Aqba treaty, or the, the covenant that Medina made with the Prophet. Ahlul Medina came to the Prophet and made the, it was the first Aqba, okay? These, these are some of the things that they swore to. These are the things they swore to when they took the Shahada, okay? When they bore witness. And this, I will now, um, Read some of that off real quick. If you want uh, any of this, you know, I'll, I'll send it to whoever, you know, this part, you know, whoever wants this, let me know. I'll tag it into your vicinity, inshallah. But, uh, for references, okay. So let's go back real quick, okay. Hold up. Okay, so we're going to go right here. And I'm going to read several things off real quick. Alright, so those are... How many? Those are nine. Ten. Those are ten basic... Uh, there's a t ten uh, basic things that was named off. What you are to do and what not to do, right? Call the Surat Mustaqim. That we asked for. Ihdina Surat Mustaqim. Ihdina Surat Mustaqim. Well, he gave you the Surat Mustaqim. Right? So, when you read all those right there, you don't need a group of, of, of scholars to tell you to practice this. <laughs> to do, do kindness to the orphans. Uh, to, you know, not commit zina. Not to kill your children. Not to slander people. You see what I'm saying? And, and these are the rules and principles that if you just sit back and imagine. Let's say that this was the main Surat al-Mustaqim that you was calling Dawa to, right? And you went throughout the world calling people to this. And you you had a zakat, right? Because zakat is also part of it. And it was to help the orphans and the wayfarers and the, you know, um, um, those in need, the traveler, like the Quran says, right? Can you imagine how many people would fastly become Muslim? I mean, think about how fast the thing grew. Because these were the actual things that they were giving Dawa about. Tawheed was number one, but, you know, uh, Helping the orphans, helping the needy, freeing the slaves. Okay, that's another part of Surah al uh, that's called the steep path. Freeing the slaves. Right? That was a main part of the deen. So you didn't have this clouded of different schools and different, uh, not different schools, but yeah, yeah, that too. Different schools, different rules of hadith. You didn't have all that at the first, at the first generation. You had these. Surah al and that was the dawah given. Okay, and that's why the dean spread so fast uh, against uh, interest, like when when you would teach against interest, right? People who are uh, who are who are wronged, right? Um, under a system that does interest, people who have uh, people who come out their pockets to help the orphans, to visit the orphans, help the sick, help the need. I mean, this is Surah Al-Mustaqim. Teach about the oneness of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. That Allah sent these Surah Al-Mustaqim. Can you imagine how fast the deen would have, would grow? But today the deen is slowed down. It's spreading, but it's slow. It's not like it w it was at first, right? Um. So we're gonna get into this, okay? Okay. So on the site, I got this uh, questions on Islam dot com. We're gonna go there real quick. So they quote the same thing, to not associate any partner with, with Allah, not to steal, not to commit adultery, not to kill their children for hunger, not to slander anyone, 
not to oppose an auspicious cause. Uh, it's talking about the, at the time of Aqaba. It says, after this allegiance was made. So this is what was swore to. This right here. This was the cause that the Prophet went into Medina on. Okay? At Aqaba. The first Aqaba. Okay? It says, after this allegiance was made, our Holy Prophet Islam said to them, Allah has prepared paradise. And guarantee reward for those of you who fulfill his pledge. If someone commits one of these misdeeds out of human error. And is punished in this world. That punishment will be considered atonement. And whoever commits one of these out of human error. And conceals what he has done. And does not reveal it. Like the Hadith says. Conceal your faults. Then it is left to Allah to decide to forgive or punish him. Furthermore. These Muslims, the first generation, made the following agreement with our Prophet. Obedience and submission came first and foremost during the times of distress, pressure, prosperity, happiness. We are under your amr. We are under your command. We will not disobey you in any way. The above mentioned issues that those who were present at the first Aqaba pledge promised not to do, to, not to do are the things that form a peaceful community. There would definitely be no law in order in a community where those ugly deeds were prevalent. So this is the earliest. This is the, the community Islam that we're talking about. These, the, You see what I'm saying? This is Surat al-Mustafa. This is Sunnah. All this other stuff that we got going on. That they become added as time went on. Is not Sunnah. All these differences of opinion and all this. You know there's no need. For a difference of opinion if you stick into this. As Suratul Mustaqeen. Okay. Those who were present at the pledge. When this, these eyes revealed. The first 12 Muslims of Medina. Who were present at the first allegiance. Asad ibn Zurara. Two. Auf ibn Harith. Three. Muad ibn Harith. Four. Rafi ibn Malik. Five. Zakwan bin Qais. Six. Ubeda. Ibn Samit, seven Yazid ibn Salaba, eight Abbas ibn uh, Ubada, nine Kutaba, uh, Kutba ibn Amir, ten Uqba bin Amr, and Umay bin Said Saida, twelve Abu Haytham Malik ibn Tayyhan. Four the Muslims of Medina returned to their homeland after the meeting. So remember, we're talking about Medina again. Practice of Medina. Later on the Hadiths would have to be checked. In accordance to what the practice of Medina was. Who was following the Surat al-Mustaqim. Which is these principles I just named off. Okay. In other words, you know, no gambling, no, you know, all those main rules that are haram. That's Surat al-Mustaqim. That's Islam. That's, you know. Okay. So it says, uh, Muslims of Medina returned to their homeland after this meeting. There, there they continued to have their voices heard and spread the light of Islam. It was this that they were spreading. These things that they pledged to. These eyes I just named off. Okay. Um. All right. That's kind of the command to follow Allah's straight path and avoid all other paths. Now, this is a tafsir ibn Qatir on it. Uh, tafsir taf, tafsir.com. Um, Ali ibn Abi Talha reported that Ibn Abbas commented on Allah's statements and follow not, no other paths, for they will separate you from his path. That's the eyes I just read. Saying that you should establish the deen and make no divisions in it. See, you got to understand, this very ayahs right here is all those hadiths that you keep hearing about. Uh, don't do bitter. Um, uh, 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 you are divided into sects. One sect, the one me and my community is on. All these is talking about dividing away from the amrs of the, the amr of Allah, the command of Allah. And these are the commands mapped out. See? So, uh, this, a lot of Nowadays, uh, made up sectarianism has the, the hadith that they're trying to apply to them doesn't even have nothing to do with them. It has to 
from div dividing and deviating away from these principles and commands and laws that the lost poem Allah sent down. Like one astray. So it says Ali ibn Abi Talha reported that Ibn Abbas comment on Allah's statement and follow not other paths for they will separate you from his path and saying that you should establish deen and make them division. And similar ayah in the Quran, Allah commanded the believers to adhere to the jama'at and forbade them from causing divisions and disputes. Disputes about what? These commands. It's simple. They're simple. There's nothing to dispute. Helping the orphan. <laughs> only a person who is arrogant, only a person who wants fame and glory to create a, a group or sector, you know, to call themselves special, you know, the names and, you know, and cause divisions and, you know, or make up new Amr commands. Oh, it's permissible to kill a person. They pass a fatwa. It's permissible to kill this person because this and this and this and that. Hold on. The, 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 command, the command is different. Uh, it's been set out already. You know, but that's how that's how people start to make up their own things. See. So it says, uh, and this is the famous also ayahs right here that we just read. Uh, these 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 laws. This is when the prophet saw some drew his hand in the sand. Also, that hadith. See, this connects to several hadiths, but you, but a lot of us think they're separate hadiths though. But they're actually connected to one situation. Okay, like when the prophet drew his hand in the sand. He says, this is the straight path. Do not, these are other paths. Do not go on them. It's referring to these rules, these, these laws that were given. You see, follow it. And don't veer off. Don't become of those who differ. Don't become of those who say, oh, murder is acceptable in another case. Because Sheikh such and such said so. And his interpretation and his knowledge says this and that. And then you blindly follow it. And blind binding, I'm not saying that he don't give you something to read. I'm saying you have the Surat al Mustaqim laid out for you already. You see? So it says, uh, Abdul Ibn, okay, um, Allah commanded the believers that adhere to Jamaah and forbade them from causing division and disputes. He informed them that those before them were destroyed because of divisions and disputes. Okay? Abdul Ibn Masood said, The Messenger of Allah drew a line with his hand in the sand and said, This is Allah's path leading straight. He then drew lines to the right and the left and said, These are the other paths. On each path there is a devil who calls to it. He then recited the ayat. Again. Uh, Verily, this is my straight path, so follow and follow not other paths, for they will separate you away from this path. Surah 6, Ayah 153, right? Al Hakim also recorded that this hadith and said it's chain of Sahih. So of course we're jumping into the signs that they came about, you know, saying it's Sahih, right? Um, but we'll get to that stuff later though. But they did not record it. Iman Ahmad and Abi bin Humayd recorded that this is the wording of Ahmad that Jabir said we were sitting with the Prophet when he drew a line in front of him and said, This is Allah's path, and he also drew lines to the right and to the left. Uh, if you and anybody that wants that, shoot me an in my inbox. I'll send you all this information, um, so you can go look at uh, uh, references to this ayahs, so you understand. Okay, um, here's one. Verily, uh, Surah. Uh, these are the passages she done any places. Hand on the middle path and recite this ayah. Surah, uh, uh, ayah one fifty three. And verily, this is my straight path. So follow it and follow not other paths, for they will separate you from the path then he that this has he ordained for you that you may have taqwa. Imam Ahmad ibn Majid in the book of Sunnah in his Sunan and Al Bazar collected this hadith. Ibn Jarir recorded that a man asked Ibn Masud, What is Surat al Mustaqim, the straight path? Ibn Masud replied, Muhammad left us at its lower end, and its other end is the paradise. To the right of this path are other paths, and to the left of are other paths, meaning other rules and other laws and I mean, other 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 things that go against it. See, like for example, if a person forms a group and says, "Man, don't don't give to no orphans, don't don't uh, is you know, seen as okay, you know, um, 
Here's a breakdown of the interpretation of what makes Xena okay. Here's an interpretation to break down that uh, here's the circumstance. Uh, you know, let's make something specific into general and then say it's okay. Right? That would be deviating. That would be firaq. That would be dividing. That would be breaking away. Okay? That would be uh, not being with the jama'ah. Meaning those, jama'ah means those who gathered to agree and pledge to this, these laws and deen. The deen. Okay? Um, so it says, uh, what is Surat the Musakim? Ibn Masul replied, Muhammad left us at his lower end and his other end is paradise. To the right of this path are other paths. To the left of it are paths. And these are men in those paths calling those who pass by them. Whoever goes on the other paths will end up in the fire. This has nothing to do with sectarianism. In the sense, what we're calling sectarian nowadays. Because all the sects, Ibadi, uh, Shia, uh, Al-Sunnah, Salafi, they all say you should give to the orphan. They all say you should give to the zakat. They all say you should do salat. They all say, that, you see what I'm saying? It's not applied to that. This wasn't originally applied to that. Um, unless you want to say that the area of shirk. Now, people have the arguments on that. But as far as the other stuff, it it, it doesn't apply. You know, <laughs> but we made it apply. We become like Christians and Jews. You see, each disputing with each other. We don't even know what the Surah the Mustaqim really is. See, it's right in front of our face, but we don't know it. Okay, continue. So, it says, uh, okay, calling those who pass by them. Whoever goes on the other paths will end up in fire. Whoever takes a straight path will end up in paradise. Ibn Masood then recited the ayat, and verily, this is my straight path. So follow it, and follow not other paths, for they will separate you away from his path. Imam Ahmad recorded that. And Nawis Ibn Samam said, the Messenger of Allah said, Apparently this is my straight path, follow it. Okay, um, okay, here we go. And this is the last one on this one. Imam Ahmad recorded that, An Nawis Ibn Samam said, that the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah has given a parable of the straight path. Watch this. And the two sides of this path, there are two walls containing doorways. On the, on these doorways, there are curtains that are lowered down. On the gate of this path, there is a caller saying, O people, come and enter the straight path. I Meaning, come follow these laws that lead to uh, prosperity and, you know, and, and peace. Um, it, says there's, uh, it says, O people, come into the straight path all together and do not divide. There is another... There's also another caller that heralds from above the path who says when a person wants to remove the curtain of any of these doors, woe to you, do not open this door, for if you open it, you will enter it the straight, okay, you will enter it. So the, the part that you're not supposed to go. And it says the straight path is Islam. The straight path is Islam. These rules, these laws right here is Islam. Two walls are Allah's set limits. Follow those rules and laws. The open doors leads to Allah's prohibitations. The collar on the gate of the path is Allah's book. The Quran. While the collar from above the path is Allah's admonition, warning in the heart of every Muslim. You don't need the priest class of now and day the scholars that, you know, we believe we do. The Surat Mus King is very simple. Very simple. And um, now the, the job of an imam or leader is to simply direct you to what is in the book. It says, look, this is what the law says, blah, 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 blah. He's giving you dawah. He's calling you. Dawah means to call from the word, like, like you deserve the word dua. He's showing you. Sort of like what I'm doing now. I'm just showing you it. Right? Now, if you it's not clear to you, then 
you know, a person could explain various situations, maybe, you know, uh, of how to give to an orphan or how to give us a cut or, you know, things like that, you know what I'm saying? But, I mean, the the way that we have it, what I'm saying, the way that we have it today is, is incorrect. Um, color gate is Allah's book. While the color from the brother path is Allah's ammunition in the heart of every Muslim. Um, Tamidi uh, graded it as Hassan Garib. Okay. So follow it and follow not other paths. The other part of ayat describes Allah's path in the singular sense because truth is one. Allah describes the other paths in the plural because they are many and are divided. Allah said in another ayah, Allah is the wali, protecting guardian of those who believe. He brings them out from the darkness into light. But as for those who disbelieve, their supporters are tagut, false, tyrannical rulers or deities. They bring them from the light, or that which is clear, into darkness, into that which is not so clear. Those are the dwellers of the fire. They will abide therein forever. Now, it says, Ubaidah ibn Samit said the Prophet Muhammad used to take pledge of Islam from the people in Mecca by reciting these ayats. So these same ayats that the, the people of uh, Aqaba swore to, which is what we've been reading on, which was his, his Islam itself, okay, uh, also in Mecca, People would pledge, become Muslim on reciting these. Shahada. Um, it says, use to take pledge of Islam from people in Mecca by reciting these ayats. Some uh, fuqaha call them al-Din al-Jami, the universal and comprehensive teachings of Deen. These commandments include belief, worship, ethics, laws pertaining to social, economic, civic matters. Similar teachings were also given in the Torah, Exodus 20 to, to, to 17, Deuteronomy 5, chapter 5, 6, 21, to Israelites, and are known among the Jews and Christians as the Ten Commandments. In the Quran, these commandments are given in these ayats. Each ayat has a very appropriate ending in the verse, there are five commands ending with the statement so that you may understand. So that you may understand. It's clear. Okay. In the second ayat, there are four commands ending with the statement so that you may remember. So, so that you may understand and that you may remember. In the third ayat, there is one command ending with the statement that you may become God conscious. These, these are the things that lead you to become taqwa. Mutaqi. The obvious meaning is that when you use your reason, remember your responsibilities and find the divine path, then you can acquire righteous and pious character. This should be the final objective of your deen, faith, iman. Let us look at these three sets of commands. Okay. So, Early Islam, that's how simple it was. Okay? That's how simple it was. It's not so simple like that no more. Matter of fact, some of the stuff is uh, not even considered the main objects of the deen. Because the deen becomes so covered up by other things. You got a whole science of hadith you got to do. You know, um... Just and then you got to go to that shake and this shake for him to interpret this and that for you. Whereas when you understand Surah al came like this, it's straight to Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. You go and implement and get a group of brothers and sisters and go out there and visit the orphans. You know, I'm i I've, I've had to start rearranging my whole, you know, yes, these eyes are in there, and yes, we read them, but we don't look at them as the focus point of Dean though. We look at it as some, oh, I'll, you know, inshallah, I get to doing helping the orphan, you know, inshallah, every once a year. No, bruh. This is deen. These are things you're supposed to go out and do. Like, repetition.
surreptitiously. But these are back burner now and other stuff. You know, Sheikh such and such says such 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 Sheikh Fatwa and Hikma and uh, not Hikma Hukum and you know. Uh, so we're gonna get into this. So okay. So again, not associating any problems with the law. Do not steal. Not commit adultery. Don't kill your children out of fear of one. Don't slander anyone. Don't oppose an auspicious cause. You know. So, um, I think I read all of it. Yeah, I read all of it as far as on what's here. All right. <coughs> all right. So, that was early Islam. That was the pledge. That's the pledge of Surat Mustaqim. Okay. Um, one more time, let's read it. Say. Surah 5, here we go, Surah 5, Ayah 151, say, come, let me tell you what your Lord has really made haram for you, or sanctified for you, to do and not do. You should not set up idols or deities besides Him, besides Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are to honor your parents. You are not to kill your children for fear of poverty. We provide for you and them, cousin. Time to prop Muhammad, they were burying their female daughters alive, remember? And today we get a, and some people say abortions, but there's an argument over there, okay. But, you know, uh, um, you should not commit fahisha, shameful deeds, obvious or hidden. You're not to kill the life of Allah is made sacred except in the course of justice. You are not to touch the orphan's money except in the most righteous manner until they reach maturity. That's number six. Number seven, you shall give full measure and full weight when you trade equably. We do not bear it in any soul beyond its means. Eight, you shall be absolutely just when you bear witness even against your relatives. That's against right there the concept of asabiyah. Nine, you shall fulfill your pledges with Allah, the covenant. These are his commandments, Amr, to you, that you may take heed. This is my straight path, Surat al-Mustaqim. You shall follow it and do not follow any other paths, lest they divert you from his paths. These are his commandments to you that you may be saved. You may take heed or you may attain taqwa. Okay, now, going to that hadith. Mannal, whenever, ahadathal, invents, amil, commits an action, amaruna, in our commands, radu, rejected, whoever, uh, invents an action, in our commands, it is to be rejected, bidda. So, you just heard what the commands are. And you know the hadith that says don't innovate something into commands of Allah. Also, you will see differences. How about the Khalaf al Rashidun hadith? It says, You shall see differences after me. Follow my sunnah, my conduct, my way. And the conduct. Of the rightly guided who come after me. Because Khalafa, Khalid, Khulafa means those who come after. Those who come after. Right? Rashid is is uh rightly guided. And there's another idea that talk calls it Mahdiun. Those guided ones. Mahdiun. Right? So Rashid because they know the truth and adhere to it. And opposite of that is Gawa. To recognize it but not follow it. So God would, would be the people who would deviate. Who would divide. Who would stop following these commands that I just read off. And they would uh, have various reasons why they are doing that. They would fall back from their Islam. They would fall off the Surat al-Mustaqim. They would divide into different factions, groups, sects on this issue. Simple. Um, 
Mahdiin. Allah guided them to the truth and did not lead them astray. Right. Um, so, both of those hadiths and then the, uh, the other hadith. So, the Rashidin hadith, follow my rightly guided successors. Uh, that's generally anybody that was following these commands right here after the time of the Prophet. They were the rightly guided successors. They were those who were following the rules and amrs of Allah. They were those who were not committing the bid'ah, were not adding commands into, you know, these rules and laws, right? And anybody that did were those who went astray, right? It, had nothing, it has nothing to do with the sectarianism that, that people are on today. Or apply to that, because most of the different sects that you see that we call sects, uh, they all believe to give charity, helping the orphans, uh, uh, no uh, 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 zina, honor your parents. And they believe in uh, not committing shameful deeds, obviously hidden. You're not to kill a law except the life of laws, you know, said to take under justice. Um, don't touch the, or touch the orphan's money except in the most righteous manner, right? Uh, when you give weight and measure, you should give full weight and measure. That means no interest, no usury, right? And then Allah says, these are the commandments to you that you may take heed. This is my surat al-mustaqim. So most of the groups that you're calling sex today are not sex according to this terminology and definition of what Surat al-Mustaqim is, except in the area if you want to try to say certain people were doing shirk. Um, that would be an issue on that level, right? Um, but there's arguments for and against certain things, right? So we're not going to get into that. But the fact of the matter is Khalifa Rashidun at first was just general. The Jama'ah, that was those who were Khalifa Rashidun. Those who were rightly guided. Those who followed the Amr, the commands of Allah. The Surat al-Mustaqim. Who stayed straight on it. Those who didn't add to it. So now, the reason why I talked about Aqaba, because the people of Aqaba in Medina were the ones that uh, these commands for mainly, you know, were established from Mecca into Medina, but it became the home of the Sunnah. The Sunnah. Now you know what the Sunnah is. It's the Surat al-Mustaqim. Okay, the method and the conduct of the Prophet, his living sunnah, his practice, okay, was these things. And that's why Islam spread so far and so fast. Because, you know, the Muslims when they came out, it, you know, you got, just imagine people coming out and right away they're, they're helping the orphans. They're, uh, they're teaching people the wisdom about the oneness of Allah and him not having a partner or a son or a daughter or a wife. Um. Uh, they're coming out. They're teaching people who may have who are crazy against their parents. You know, they're teaching them why. You know, it, it's the wisdom, the hikmah, why to uh, listen to your parents is important. You know, um, they're teaching them not to children kill their children because of poverty. You see what I'm saying? Um, uh, they're teaching them not to commit gross and shameful deeds and the reason behind it. Um, And they're teaching them to bear witness justly, right? Even if for even if it's against your own relatives, because at that time the climate was, you know, if it's my family, I'm gonna back my family up whether they did wrong or not. You see, I'm gonna help them do their wrong. I'm gonna help them, help them do their dirty work. You see, um, so he was, they teach them, and it, you know, this is what changed society. This is what made people love Islam so much. And they said this is different. You know, this is uh, the heavens on the earth, you know, and, and, and the people who were pushing this, uh, the, the, the companions of the prophet and the family of the prophet, you know, their hearts have become immersed in this through the 10 and 10 years in Mecca and the 13 years of Medina getting taught this over and over and having to actually combat to establish this way of life. But then afterwards, after this, this knowledge, this simple knowledge right here came to them. And it's established in Medina, the prophet city. It's the living sunnah. It's the home that you could just, you, you know, a group develops, basically. Uh, Ahlul Hadith, the people of traditions. They're going around, you know, learning tr different traditions. Um, Ahlul Rai develops, you know, um, which dealt with traditions and the use of intellect. And then you had out of the hadith that developed into the, those who were based simply on Isnad, chain of narrator, going back, 
but that was not the original, uh, you know, it was not, <laughs> it wasn't really needed all the way like that, right? They made it into actual sect. Now, you got all different type of disagreements. Let me give an example, right, before I read this off to you. And we're going to be using this, Malika Medina and uh, Islamic legal reasoning in the formative period, okay? So I just, that was just my warm up, what the straight path is, okay? Um, in the straight path of Amr, the commands of law, all those other commands in the Quran that you find, right? Um, gambling, no gambling, you know, uh, no, you know, as time went on, more things were put to the Salat al-Mustaqim, right? Um, so... Then what happens after this? Islam is spreading. We have the, uh, for what became known as Khilafah Rashidun, because you got to understand, uh, or Rashidun, Khalifa Rashidun, that was a general term for those who adhered to these Amr, these laws, right, at first. And then it became, right, then it became uh, restricted to uh, Abu Bakr and Umar, and some people said Noah's four, Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman. So the divisions, the dividing over these things, because now people want to try to call it something. They want to try to uh, 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 speci specify something that Allah and His Messenger, I mean, the Messenger is His general statement. He says, after me you will see differences. It's very clear. After me you will see differences. Differences from what? Differences from the Amr, the commands of Allah, the straight path. Right? Some people basically justifying gambling, right? And then the group develops around them. Yeah, gambling is halal. Gambling is halal, here's why. But it's clear, don't gamble. Uh, don't murder. Don't steal unless seeking just cause. People twist a little bit. Oh, it's so permissible to kill this man and kill that woman. Because why? Because blah, 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 blah. They make up their own reasons. Deviance from the straight path. Surat al-Mustaqim. A group, Firaq. Develops around that justification. Each one of these things people justify, right? That was your form of sectarianism then, then. It had nothing to do with what we're talking about now. Oh, you're Shia, you're Sunni. Oh, you believe the 12 imams are the best leaders of follow, or you believe 70 imams, or whatever, how many imams you got. And, you know, you, oh, you believe it. Oh, that's bitter. That's innovation in religion. Let the, if the man wants to believe seven people over here is. You know, qual the best in the world, and that even, you know, he got some tradition over there that he says that the prophet appointed. I mean, yeah, you're going to say it a lie because that's not the tradition you go on. Based on what? Based on some rules of hadith that you made up and you became learned in. You became a scholar in it. None of the Sahaba said, hey, this is an ahad hadith category. None of the Sahaba al said, this is a mutawatir. Uh, uh, category of hadith. This is sahi. This is daif. This is you made that up in the amr of Allah. Then you have your teachers. Why? Because now your teachers they become qualified and they can get the money from the people. That money belongs to the orphans, Aki and Upti. The zakat that belongs to the orphans. For the Surat al -Mustakim. You make a money profit off of it. Alright? So, I had... Let's go into here. I read... This is, I must say, out of comparison, some other books are... Uh, is the most thorough on the, uh, you know... Islamic legal reasoning in the formative period that I've read. I mean, it gets the different views, of, you know, the, 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 the you know, it's, it's in deep. Malika Medina. Because Medina is where the Sunnah of the Prophet was practiced. The Surat al Musaqim was practiced. You see? They have to travel to go find Hadith. Because Thousand Sahaba were there. They lived there. So that's became that became known as Mutawatir. Okay. In Hadith terminology that became Medina became known as Mutawatir. 
which is mass narrator. Okay. So there's a statement though. And this is how we know also that I had at this time meant just one person narrating. It didn't mean three people, four people, five people, or how many number it goes to until you reach Mutawatir. That type of concept came later in the science of Hadith. Right? So on page uh, 118, uh, chapter 2. For a second. Okay. This is the famous Medinis Juris. Juris. Ibn Majishun was asked why the Medinis transmitted hadiths that they did not follow. So, what he's asking him is this. He's saying, okay, hold on. How come you guys have these hadiths in Medina? That you and Medina don't follow. It doesn't make sense to us. So somebody from somewhere else coming in. See. Going to the Sunnah. Going to the living practice. Where the pro- prophet's way is practice. It's not something that's in the book. It's not something that's in the Hadiths floating around. It's something right there in the city of Medina. Where the Sahaba went out. And spread the deen. It's called practice. It's the practice. Right. So. This is the famous Medinese jurist Ibn uh, al Mujashun was asked why the Medinese transmitted hadiths they did not follow. Now, this is on page 118, chapter 2. Uh, he answered, So that it be known that we have rejected them while having knowledge of them. Simri Malik stated that some of the people of knowledge among the successors would transmit hadiths or receive them from others but say we are not ignorant of them but the practice listen to this the practice has been firmly established mada contrary to them so people would come on hadith hey what about this hadith and this hadith do you have this hadith that the prophet do you have this and they're saying hey listen we are the city of the prophet We've been through all the stages, all the stuff that you want to talk about abrogating, the abrogating, and learning that. No, we've been through all that as a living example in practice. We, it, it, our sunnah is the sunnah, the finalization. So, what you're coming to tell us? Yes, we have knowledge of that, but we don't practice that. Was it something that was uh, one time? Uh, authentic sahi, yeah, was something. But we don't practice that because that was a stage. See? So one group is Alu Hadith, the people Hadith. The other group is Amal Medina. Amal meaning action or D Medina. Remember the Hadith where it said, uh, I don't think, and many people don't make this connection, but listen to this. It's a Hadith, a statement. The Prophet, would, uh, it says, uh, he says, uh, so he's talking, he said, whomsoever innovates in this affair of ours, by this co- in the commands, it will be rejected. Remember? So the word is, mennal, whoever, at, uh, at whoever invents, without precedence, as some put, amil, or amal, commits an action, deeds. Right? Amruna, in our commands, Radu is to be rejected. Okay? So, here you have the Amal, these actions of Medina, which is the Sunnah of the Prophet. And, it, and, and, and actually, let me distinguish real quick. So, Medina had its own culture at one time, right before the Prophet got there. So, they, they the parts that they could keep, they kept, which is part of the action of Medina. And then you had the Sunnah of the Prophet that came there. Okay? So, that became uh, the, the Sunnah of the Prophet that he showed how to live, right? Um... So, so you got to distinguish between this is this is where they get off, you know, saying that a Muslim can have culture and they can have the Sunnah. Okay, uh, it it stems out from the practice of Medina. Um, also, Imam Abu Nifa, he also uh, allowed culture on the on the um, um, under um, his method methodology of Hadith, right? But this right here is not Hadith. This right here is Sunnah. 
You know, this is practice. This is the, the living life how they lived. This is not searching out sayings. See? Um, so he says, uh, Malik's teacher, Rabiat al Rai, said, For me, and this is a common saying. Okay. So how do we know that, that Ahad? How do we know that Ahad uh, in the category of Hadith? And what is Ahad? Ahad is where it says one person, or eventually they said it doesn't, there's no specific number unless in Mishim Mutawati, which is mass narrated. But we're going to keep it at one person. One person narrates a Hadith um, where there is a, a group of people was there, but that one person narrated it. But you would think a group of people would narrate it, right? Because they were there. But one person narrated it, and then um, within the first three generations, one, two, three, it stayed at the level of being Ahad. It was singly. Ahad means one. It was singly narrated by one person. All right? Whereas in Medina, you had what? Thousands upon thousands upon thousands of uh, companions and Ahlul Bayt, the Quran from Muhammad's family, who lived there. Right? And they practiced daily what the deen was. So, that's what the Sunnah was. Now, listen to this. Because, because nowadays what happens is most of the uh, hadiths that we have in Bukhari, uh, Muslim, um, th- things of nature, you have some of what Malik had, the Sunnah, and then you have um, in the, the Sunnah from Muwatta. Imam Malik's book, by the way, uh, Muwatta is the Sunnah book. Okay, It's not a hadith book. Uh, the other books are hadith books. Right, um, because Imam Malik wrote down the living practice of Medina, right? Um, but yeah, other hadith books like Bukhari and Muslim incorporated m- much of uh, the Sunnah parts of uh, Imam Malik's book, um, but then it added a whole bunch of ha- hadith from the Alu Hadith movement into it, onto it. Okay, um, this is of course where different opinions will start coming in. Any case, uh, but listen to this. Malik's teacher Rabiat Al Rai said, "For me, one thousand transmitting from one thousand, meaning the Medina practice, meaning from generation to generation, one thousand people who lived in Medina, fathers and sons and wives would teach their daughters and mothers and sons." The practice of the prophet. So that's 1,000 of them. Turning around to 1,000 of them in the city of the prophet. Uh, it's preferable to one transmitting to one. Meaning it's, pref- it's preferable. To listening to them is preferable to a person coming. Who comes to you and says, hey, this is the Ahad category of Hadith. Uh, this is Sahih, this is authentic, and you must follow it. Because it's, it's Hadith and Sunnah of the Prophet. Right? But he says, uh, 1,000 transmitting from 1,000 Medina is preferable to one person transmitting from one. And then he says, because one person transmitting from one would tear the Sunnah right out of our hands. So that means the city of Medina has to practice the established practice of the Sunnah. I'm talking about the days of Mount Malik. I'm not talking about the Medina today. Okay, that, that has nothing to do with that. Okay, that's completely something different now. But at this day, right, he said one person there, basically I'm going to say it in the right language. One person narrating a, a had or a single hadith, or one person narrating a hadith that is sahih, that's recognized authentic, uh, and claiming that it's Sunnah, it's preferable, what's preferable to me is getting the Sunnah from 1,000 people who uh, transmitted to 1,000 other people within the city of the Prophet who lived it. It's more preferable to accept Sunnah for them than get my Sunnah from a high category of Hadith. But what has happened today is 
the Ahad category of Hadith, many Muslims go by. And uh, actually, this is the category of Hadith that Muslims differ over. You see this opinion over all the time. And this is important because, uh, you know, deen, what you accept in your deen, um, is determined by that. You know, uh, for example, the prophet going to uh, the, the mirage. You know, the Quran talks about the mirage, the ascension. Um, some people say it was a vision. The prophet went up in the heavens. Um, I'll give an example. Okay. Here's an example. We know that the city of the prophet practiced the fire, practiced the salah. Okay. Um, there's a practice from Mecca. And they went to Medina, and then after the Prophet died, they were practicing it, okay? They needed no hadith to tell them later on, you know, that uh, in order to, to authenticate this practice, because the Prophet himself showed them it, see what I'm saying? Um, but uh, a hadith came that says that uh, the Prophet went on a night journey, then he sent it up into heaven. Um, he sent it up into heaven. Led the prophets in prayer. And that's how he got his prayer. Right? Well, the, the, the thing about this category of hadith that narrates that. Or, you know, where, where the prophet Sallallahu went back to Allah. After Musa told him to go back. You know, the prophet Sallallahu was not satisfied with Allah's answer. Right? And he went to Musa. And then Musa told him, no, 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 people can't put up that, go back to Allah. So then the Prophet Islam listened to Musa rather than Allah's command, right? So, that's how the five daily prayers were established. Right? That's what they say. They didn't even need the hadith to do that. Because whether a person accepts the, and I'm talking about the, now the first part is the midaj that's in the Quran okay the journey right ascension up into heaven that's in a hadith okay first part in the Quran second part ascending into heaven hadith hadith category ahad okay single narration single narrator uh, now the Alo hadith movement who based themselves on isnad chasing the narrators back will say this is sahih you have to accept this. The Prophet Sallallahu said it. al Rai, which is like Imam Banif school who used intellect and other empirical knowledge to arrive if a hadith was authentic or not. Um, some of them say that, uh, for example, the one example, the, the, the Munafiqeen, who were righteous in their conduct, seemed to appear righteous in conduct, they had knowledge, but they're liars. Right? Um, and don't quote the ones, okay, well, I accept a uh, hadith from a munafiq uh, because he told the truth in this instance. Some that say that too. And the cool thing about it, that part right there is the hadith that says um, the person who's a liar who told the truth, the hadith has nothing to do with a munafiq. So that's out the wrong context. That hadith has to do with uh, a jinn being caught stealing food stuff. Abu Hurairah narrated that a jinn was caught stealing food and then, you know, he grabbed that jinn like three or four times and the jinn kept crying, you know, uh, I have children to feed, so he let him go out and, he, and he's like, I'll never come back. And then finally, uh, he grabbed the jinn and said, I'm taking you to the prophet for stealing. And then after that, uh, he let him go again. And then when the prophet Islam said, did you have a guest? He said, yes. He said, uh, who, who, what guest did you have? And then he said, uh, he, he told the prophet on the story. He says, now, Buhura, do you know who he was talking to? Buhura said, no. Allah and his messenger knows best. And Abu Huraira, uh, Allah spoke to Allah, uh, excuse me, Allah's messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, that was shaitan. He told you the truth, but indeed shaitan's a liar. So from that one thing right there, some people took and drew an Islamic principle of law, right, that a liar, you can accept deen from a liar. Who's a hypocrite? Right? Put into, you know, uh, the deen. And yet, Allah says, like the Quran, the shaitans, 
the, the liars, the shaitan's descent on the liar. And then inside the Quran, the Quran says what shaitan attempts to what make vain that which Allah has revealed. So why would you turn around and try to accept a hadith from a munafiq? If you, even if you knew he's a munafiq. So I mean, it, it they just don't it, that just don't make sense at all, right? But back to the other thing, right? So that's where that one principle came from. Um, so we see the second part of the hadith going into the heavens that is narrated in a hard category of hadith. Um, some say if you don't accept it, you're a heretic, you're a zandik, you're a person. Uh, you're a person of, you know, you go by your desires, they say, right? Um, ridiculous, ridiculous. You know, there's no need for that hadith at all, really, because the practice, the Sunnah Prophet was established already, you know, concrete. So it's, it's, a, it's the, the Sunnah Prophet, Sunnah of, the, of, of uh, Salah is Mutawatir category, if you want to put in the category, right? So you don't even need that ahad hadith to say you have to do salat in that ridiculous story. But people do. People do. You know what I'm saying? Um, there's more than one way to accept what I'm saying. The salat is <laughs> is being valid and it's a stronger way, right? So um, so this is a bull use of al rad Allah. Siyar al Awazi emphasized the imperative relying on the well known Sunnah, avoiding irregular hadiths. Okay, hold on. So, solitary hadiths, when you, um, hold on a second. So, this is about uh, accepting sound uh, chains of hadith, right? Um, Abu Yusuf al Arad al Siyar al Awazi emphasizing the period of relying on well known Sunnah. Well known Sunnah would be the, the Mala Medina, okay? Avoiding irregular hadiths. Irregular hadiths in this case would be Ahad, the single category hadith, right? Isa ibn Aban upholds the same position as a basic principle uh, for, ibn, for Ibn Aban's solitary hadiths. Kabat al Ahad are not. Adequate for establishing the Sunnah. So, so for Ibn Aban, and this is back in the day, right? Qabr al Ahad. Qabr means a report. Uh, that's another word they use for Hadith. Qabr is a report. Al Ahad is the category of Hadith, right? Um, are not adequate for establishing Sunnah. So many of us have been taught, we, we get taught, except Ahad Hadith, and you have to. Because this comes from, and this is my whole point, this comes from the Alul Hadith movement mentality. You think it's Islam itself, but it's nothing but an interpretation of what is called Islam. The Islam for real is Surat Mustaqim that I read off. But these Hadith sciences, you get told, are Islam itself. And that you can't have no deen without it. And this is a lie. The Sunnah is it's been solidly practiced. But now today you believe Sunnah Hadith is one and one, right? All the way, just one and one. You reject the Hadith, you reject the Sunnah. Nonsense. It's ridiculous. It's not true, right? So the uh, so for Ibn Aban, solitary hadiths, Kabbal al-Had are not adequate for establishing Sunnah. He notes that solitary hadiths should be rejected whenever they are contrary to an established Sunnah or al Sunnah al Thabita, or contradict the Quran in a manner that leaves no possibility for reconciliation. Okay, so listen, Abu Yusuf asserts, beware of irregular hadiths. Take care to follow those hadiths which the community Jamal is following. 
which the jurors recognize valid, which are in accordance with the book and the Sunnah, right? He says, uh, legal matters on this basis, elaborate legal matters on this basis. As for what is contrary to the Quran, it is not from the Prophet, even if it has been brought down by a sound transmission. So even if a person says that this is sound, even if a person says that this is a Sahih Hadith, Sahih uh, transmission, and it goes against the text of the Quran, it, it's to be rejected. And clearly Abu Yusuf is not Alo Hadith, because Alo Hadith believes what? And again, it's an opinion. It's an opinion that developed. That's what you don't understand. These signs, Hadith sciences, are an interpretation. It's, it wasn't solid set in stone by the Prophet and the Sahaba themselves. So, um, but they have made it into the fact, an Amr. Are you starting to understand what I'm trying to get at? They've made it into an Amr. And we know that even according to that one Hadith that we're quoting, a person who invents something new in the Amr of Allah is to be rejected. So he says, as for what is contrary to Quran, if it is not, it is not from the Prophet, even if it has been brought down by a sound transmission. Let's see, go back a little bit. I think some of my stuff fell off a little bit. Alright, hold on a second. We're going to get into disconnect the Hadith, and we're going to get into um, soon here um, the different mustala. Mustala meaning the different methods of how people uh, interpret Hadith. Um, some will go by five principles uh, of, of, uh, of the chain going back, and uh, that's primarily the Alu Hadith school, uh, Imam Shafi. Shafi and Hanbali schools uh, tend to be more like that. Um, the Hanafi school, um, they don't they don't rely the traditional Hanafi school. I have to say traditional uh, Hanafi school doesn't really you know make that the primary. Uh, it's not it's not the primary issue with the Hanafi school, Hanafi method I should say, of uh, arriving at what. Hadith is Sahih and not. Um, the Hanafi school more is based on matin, based on text. What does the text say? And does it make sense according to what the Quran says? Okay. Then secondly is Isnad. Um, if need be. Right. But uh, the al Hadith movement the other way first. It's the Isnad. The chain of narrator is going back. So to them, if the chain of narrator goes back to, to the time of the prophet or to a prophet, um, then it's sahih and you have to accept And if you don't, then you're astray. You see? But either or, it's opinions. When it comes down to it, these sciences, these are opinions in the Amr command of law. But the Surah al Kingdom is really, is really simple, actually. You see, and Allah told you what Surah al is. But does do did anybody believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? That was the question. Are we like Adam alayhi salatu salam? Allah told us one thing, and then uh, Iblis told us another, and then he sincerely swore he was our well wisher, and we believed him over Allah. Because Allah is just too simple, right? Allah's telling us something too simple. Can't be that simple, can't be that easy. We've been told it's not that easy. Um so what what I'm gonna do is uh I will make another video on the mustala. The differences mustala meaning uh the way that the two main groups really the Hanafi method and the Shafi method, but then the Shafi method became more so the uh, al hadith method, you know, or al hadith method became more the Shafi method I should say, and then the Shafi method became Bukhari's method to get 
the Ahad category Hadith in his Bukhari, along with some of what Muatta, the Sunnah book of Muatta has. Um, so uh, it's a mixture. But we're going to go into those different Mustala and how they uh, interpret Hadith um, so that you can see the differences that cre creeps up with this. And you can understand this. There's no differences in the deen. The deen is simple. Um, and uh, even if you read some of the hadiths that, that it's had on what Surat al-Mustaqim is, it points it clearly out to you what it is if we but reflect and we look. So the hadith about Khalifa al-Rashidun, that was just following the commands of Allah and don't be part of the group that don't. That's all that simply was, right? Uh, the part about don't commit bidda, the thing they blown out so much a portion, that is referring to uh, also the commands of Allah and not to add into the commands of Allah. I say this from Allah, okay? That's to be rejected. That bit is to be rejected if you do. But then the same people that say these things are the same people that have developed into, they have rules of science of hadiths, and you know, and once they've ruled on the matter, if you don't accept it, then you're out to deen, subhanAllah. But then I remember another hadith. What do they say? What do they say? They say this. If the mujtahid gets it right, he gets two rewards. If the mujtahid gets it wrong, he gets one. So now the question to you is this. What if a man or a woman has ruled and you have not accepted it. But he's wrong. He gets one reward. But he's declared that you're out the dean. Or he's declared you're a zandika. Or he's declared that you're astray. Or he's declared that you're a fasak. Because you didn't accept what his ijma. His community. His sect. His group. That he then turns around and says everybody agrees on. You don't accept it. So, so this division that Allah spoke against in the Quran has entered into this ummah and the other hadiths they narrate about you will follow the Christians Jews we follow them we, we have a priesthood class you understand and they make money off of it but we don't see that we don't see that so in closing, I mean, I got we got a lot more, more to cover, you know. Um, Allah forgive me if I made any mistakes. Um, any mistakes is from me, and uh, anything that's right is from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, you know. But understand this. Like I told you, before a person pops off and says, well, the al-ulama, the al-ulama say, or the, the fuqaha say, just remember, they're the original generation, al-ulama, you know, and fuqaha is not what you say it means today. That's a development. A development occurred. You know. Um... For example, O you who believe, obey Allah, His messengers, those with authority among you. That ayat. If some people said, you know what, this applies only to Abu Bakr or Umar. Other people said, no, this is the... Eventually, as time went on, right, they got the interpretation. I think it was around the time, if I remember correctly, the Abbasid era. They said, no, 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 this is the, uh, the, the Al-Ulama. And Al-Ulama here means the scholars of, of uh, law fiqh alright then a third group says uh, oh you believe obey Allah and those in authority <laughs> um what was it I forgot what the third one was I, w I w this part I'm gonna guess okay the guess is uh, they say generally it's the community another 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 saying that has difference of opinion Follow my sunnah, and, and the sunnah of Mali Gata Khalees, I just got to breaking down this is what the sunnah was, which is the Surat al which are these rules inside the Quran, right? Um, 
and the Sunnah of Mariah Galicalese, how they translate it like that. But the Sunnah of Mariah Galicalese is the Sunnah of the Prophet. All it meant was these individuals, all it meant was these individuals who do not go astray from the Amr of Allah that the Prophet gave. Okay, and that group is called the Jama'ah that is saved. Okay. So the, the companions who, and then the other hadith, follow my sunnah, sunnah, right, God, please. Um, and the other one, um, you are breaking a different sex, each sect in the hill, except for one, and that is the one in which I am on, right? Following the companions, through the companions, right? Following it, right? That hadith is also another variation of the same hadith. See, these are the same things. It's the same situation. You just think it's different things. The sect mentioned here is breaking away from the Amr of Allah. Breaking away from the Surat al-Mustaqim, these rules that I just said. And those companions who adhere to that, that is the Jama'ah, or the al Bayt, and companions of the Prophet. Those are the Jama'ah who adhere to these simple Surat al-Mustaqim, commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And anybody who deviates or makes excuses or justifications, the reason why they can violate, then they're astray. They become the, the astray faction. So... If the Amr of Allah says do not kill, do not murder, and you come and you make a justification other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, and say, oh, it's permissible to take the life because of this and this and that, and you make a fatwa, a ruling, in the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a hukum, judgment, in the laws besides the hukum of Allah, and he says, okay, to take this person's life because of this and this and that. You deviated from Surat al-Mustaqim. And those who follow you, and who obey that blindly, or who agree with you, are the sect, firaq, division. See? It has nothing to do with what they're trying to tell you today. Sunni Shia, Sunni Mubadi. None of that. <laughs> but we believe that now, right? Um, it's crazy how things have developed in this deen. I won't say developed in the deen. The deen does not develop. It's perfected. But it's crazy how the interpretation of the deen has developed. And now we're at the point where you can't say or do nothing hardly unless you refer to some type of what they call an alim. Who is really, and back in those days the companions would be called a, a faqih. One who understands his deen. And an alim in those days of what? Was a person who knew astronomy or a person who knew uh, science of the heavens and earth. Who reflected on it and arrived at the oneness of a law. That's an alam, which is the first stage of what? To be a moment. But they've distorted it now. So we're gonna go through, you know, some more of this. Um I hope I wasn't bouncing everywhere today. I just wanted to briefly uh, put this, you know, out here. Um, that's a form period. You get a chance to get the book. Tells you about the, all the formations. Majority formations. Step-by-step -step Islamic legal reasoning. Um, schools. It's text law. Okay. Um, so, um. I'm also going to put a link at the bottom uh, on the Hadith, uh, follow my uh, follow uh, my Sunnah, Sunnah, right of God of Caliphs, and you can see the difference of opinion on that, because everything has a difference of opinion, and that's my whole point. It's not really the deen. The deen is solid. Or how about ijma? Consensus. One group held consensus is what? Ijma is what? Ijma is the group of scholars, right? Or is Ijma Abu Bakr and the uh, uh, Umar? Or is Ijma the whole community coming together and agreeing? Those are the three different opinions on the word Ijma. So, we're saying that. Salaamu Alaikum Um Peace and love. I hope you got something from this. And I'll be putting the links to this video. So if you don't see them, hold on and you'll find out. Alhamdulillah. Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh.